What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and Southern Germany. I'm a huge fan of this place. The roads are incredible. We first discovered this when we went down here with Ford, when we drove the gold chrome Mustang along some of the sweeping forest roads. And what I'm gonna do today is go back to some of those roads with my AMG GTS. It is arguably the perfect car, having done so many motorway miles, country road miles, city town driving miles. This car has outperformed all of my expectations. However, in the last two to three weeks, you guys have been tagging me in so many photos on Twitter and Instagram and commenting loads on YouTube about the modifications that I am considering on this car. And I think the number one comment is army tricks. When I picked the car up from Southern Sky Motors, I did mention that this to me is a blank canvas. Over the 12 months to 18 months of owning this car, I really want to turn it into a bit of a project talk about and actually do some modifications to this car a little bit like my Audi R8 where I did some aftermarket wheels I wrapped it a few times put an exhaust system on it the AMG GT is such a popular car that so many aftermarket companies are getting involved and adding their touches to this car so this video I'm gonna jump in the driver's seat let's go for a drive and talk about some of the modifications that are available in this car the good the bad and the ugly I think for this video we are going to need Sport Plus. And I've been here once before, but I don't know the roads well enough. So this video, we are going to just go for a cruise. Let's start off with what this car actually comes with. So I have got the AMG GTS there is one model up from this. It is called the GTS Edition 1. What do you get with the Edition 1? You get a slightly more aggressive front splitter. You also get some side skirts, you get a rear fixed wing, and a carbon fiber roof. Inside with the Edition 1, you get more racy seats, the bucket seats that you also get in the A45 AMG, which I drove from Velocity Cars about a month ago. So already, Mercedes have modified the GTS to make a more aggressive version, the GTS Edition 1. And the one thing that I always do, actually, is press this button up here, that's similar to the plane, it raises the rear wing, which actually comes up at around 75 miles an hour. I like having it up because I get to see it in my rear view mirror, and it just looks cool. From behind, outside, it looks so much better up than down. I think this car, it needs a fixed wing, in the same way that the Gallardo, essentially, I think, needed a fixed wing. The important thing when it comes to modifying cars, for me, is making sure that everything is reversible back to stock. Okay, we are getting out of the town now, which is a little bit exciting. Let's move on to the modification possibilities on the AMG GTS. Now this car, the reason why I bought the AMG was because there are so many options. If you look at a McLaren 570 and the modification options on one of those cars, it's pretty much zero apart from you can wrap it. Let's just rattle through a few options that are available on this car. The manufacturers, how good they are, whether it's a good looking modification on the car, my opinion, and again, the comment section is available for you guys to express your opinion on what you think on some of the things that I'm about to show you. In March 2016, I headed to the Geneva Motor Show and I saw some of the most famous aftermarket tuners and their latest creations on the AMG GTS. So let's start with the Mansory wide body kit. Satin grey with dark red, almost burgundy carbon. It was, I tell you what, a sight to see. Whether you're a fan of Mansory or not, it is just incredible what they are able to come up with and what they're able to design. They take the AMG GTS, which has already got so much road presence, and then they do this to it. It is just crazy. The colors actually worked. I really think the colors looked good. Even though the Mansory one looks cool, I don't think that it's something that I would want to do to my car. Maybe there's little bits that you can do, but the full body kit, the full wide body kit, they really haven't given that much information as to what you have to do to a car stock 
to get the car looking full mansory after. And if it's a wide body kit, then I'm pretty worried that it is going to involve cutting around some of the wheel arches on this car. Moving on to another wide body kit available for the AMG GTS is the prior design kit. Now this is the car that I've been probably tagged in the most. Obviously because there was two of them down in Monaco for top marks and they looked utterly crazy. One in Nardo grey with a black bonnet and one in a very bright vibrant red with gold wheels. And prior design is another car where you'd have to cut around the wheel arches and it is almost impossible to revert back to stock without spending an absolute fortune. The prior design guys are seriously crazy and are creating some pretty awesome inventions. The AMG GTS, I did like it. I thought it was really quite cool and I love the fact of how low the car sat. But would it affect the ride quality? Probably. Would it affect the price of the car when you come to resale? Definitely. The Pry Design Kit is definitely something awesome to look at, but to own, I'm not convinced that is the best option. Wide body kits covered, let's move on to, I suppose, the not so aggressive yet still aggressive, non-wide body kits. I would say the more tasteful section of the opportunities available on the AMG GTS. The two companies for me that have really nailed this are Rentec. Check out some of these pictures of the Rentec AMG GTS. Now this car has got a seriously aggressive front splitter, the side skirts, rear diffuser, and a massive fixed wing. And now if you want to if you want to make an AMG GTS look like the GT3, or you want to make it look like a race car, GT3 being the AMG GT3 that races in the GT3 circuit, not a Porsche GT3. If you want to make a car, this car look as race car-y as possible, then Rentec is the way to go. You stick some aftermarket wheels on, like they've got on the uh, ADV ones on their demonstrator car, then I think it looks incredible. If you want to go as aggressive as you possibly can without going wide body kit, Rentec is the way to go. And the most exciting thing about Rentec is the fact that they also do an exhaust system. Revo Sport, Revo Sport spelled with a Z, so Revo Z Port, Revo Sport, Revo's, Revo, Revo Sport. It's quite difficult to pronounce actually when you're reading it. They do a less aggressive, even more tasteful aero kit on this car than Rentec. So Revo Sport do front splitters in carbon, side skirts in carbon, and a more aggressive rear diffuser in carbon. And they give you two options. They give you a fixed wing option in carbon fiber or a carbon fiber boot lid slash ducktail which is very cool. Look at the lake. The lake is amazing in the south of Germany, or the lakes, sorry, there's loads of them. And with Revo Sport, everything is carbon fiber. I'm, I haven't done enough research on Rentec to know whether it's all carbon fiber, but it's impressive nonetheless, and it is quite race car -y. You get the front canards in carbon fiber as well with Revo Sport, and it does look cool. It looks a bit more like an Edition 1, just with extra carbon fiber bits, a beefed up edition one. And I think, having seen some spy shots of the new AMG GTR and the Nürburgring, that what Revo Sport have actually created something quite similar to what the GTR is going to look like, the road going GT3 version. I'm pretty sure Mercedes are gonna be doing the AMG GTS, GTR, and then the AMG GT Black Series. And I found a render through topspeed.com of what a black series could look like. So check this out. I think it looks pretty cool. So when I bought the AMG GTS, I was fully aware of the future models that Mercedes were gonna be bringing out with the AMG. And I wanna try and keep up or even better what they are producing with this car. I wanna make something so cool, incredibly loud, not as loud as the Lamborghini. I don't wanna go completely asbo and bonkers. Something a little bit louder than this. Because as cool as it is, it could do with just being turning up to 11 or 12. Similar to Sam with the F-Type, his car was obviously amazingly loud stock, but with the Quicksilver, it just enhances everything that little bit better. I am continually scanning YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere to try and find videos of aftermarket exhaust systems 
of this car so that I can compare, so that I can pick the right one that I want to make this car sound amazing through towns, echoing off walls, but also through tunnels. Now, let's get out of the small town, get up into the mountains and drive this car how Mercedes wanted it to be driven. One tuner that I forgot to talk about, probably the most famous tuner of Mercedes AMG ever, Brabus. Brabus have got a kit, they've got an exhaust system, and they've also got power upgrades that you can see in Shmi's video. It looks amazing. The one thing that I would say is I don't like the four exhaust tips. I'd very much like to drive their car. I think it's got about 650 brake horsepower which is crazy, but I'm sure it drives absolutely fantastically. And this road just gets better and better the more you drive on it. I think it is time to pull over, end the video, and go to a car wash, because <laughs> this car is absolutely filthy. When I get back to the UK, I'm meeting up with Aspect Valeting and they're going to do something crazy and unique to this car, which I'm very, very excited about. So thank you for watching, guys. Please leave all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment box below about what should I do to modify this car to make it epically, epically crazy because I would love to just make this the coolest AMG GTS like I did with the Lambo and the R8. In my opinion, they were the coolest. Um, but thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our drive home, 10 hours, Germany to London. Cheers, guys.